So good morning. Um, today is Tuesday, September 7th. Um, thank you for joining our virtual open house for New York City Emergency Management. My name is Mariah Washington. I get to serve as the Community Engagement Director here at New York City Emergency Management. And today our goal is to give you an overview of what our agency does, um, how we serve the community, and ways that you can engage with our bureau. Um, many of you have been impacted by COVID-19. Um, you know that we recently, just last week, got hit by um, Superstorm or Tropical Storm Ida. Um, and we're still in hurricane season as well. Um, hurricane season goes from June all the way to November 30th. And so during this time, we often like to provide reminders of ways that you can get prepared. Um, but again, the goal is just for you to better understand what we do as an agency and how we can better be of resources to you in your community. So New York City Emergency Management's mission is we help New Yorkers before, before, during, and after emergencies through preparedness, education, and response. The educational pieces, we do um, individual preparedness workshops, and then we do community preparedness workshops where we work with community organizations, faith-based organizations, and networks throughout the five boroughs. In terms of the preparedness piece, we have several folks behind the scenes who establish very detailed plans for every any and every type of emergency that can and will happen we have plans on how the city should respond and for the response oftentimes you'll see we have folks on the ground who show up to the emergency and when we say emergency um, we are referring to man-made emergencies and or natural disasters so we recently have experienced natural disaster tropical storm ida um, pandemic, COVID-19, uh, we've had a blackout, I think that was July 2019. So there's just a variety of emergencies. Once it impacts a, a large group of people, we get involved. So something I like to share behind the scenes is what we call SIMS, Citywide Incident Management System. Um, within this system, it, it was established for New York City in 2004. And when we begin to use the system, it's really to make sure that when multiple agencies are interacting, that they all know their roles, that there is a chain of command, and that we all are playing nice in the sandbox to ensure that we are better serving New Yorkers. Um, and so what, you, what you'll see is, depending on the type of emergency, if there is an emergency, a large scale fire, then FDNY, the Fire Department of New York, would be the lead agency. Um, however, there will still be the Department of Buildings involved. There will be um, Department of Social Services involved. There will be Red Cross involved. There will be lots of entities still involved. And so New York City Emergency Management, we serve as the liaison and the, the coordinator of the agencies um, to ensure that we all are doing our parts to better respond to the emergency for our New Yorkers. We also ensure that every agency has a continuity of operations. And so when we say continuity of operations, what we're saying is when that emergency hits, you're still able to operate and function as normal to your best ability in spite of the emergency. So sometimes an emergency can hit, and could you imagine if an emergency hit and all of a sudden all the New York City agencies just stopped functioning? Um, all millions of us would be really overwhelmed and without any knowledge and we will be fearful. Um, so in so many ways, every single city agency that exists within, within New York City has a continuity of operations. And this is a plan that they establish of how they can continue their operations for any and every type of emergency. Um, this word continuity of operations is also used um, for businesses as well as community organizations and faith-based organizations. So, so many times we encourage organizations and networks like, hey, if you're a food pantry, um, you know what the needs are in your community. How can you continue your operations in spite of the emergency? Um, and so there's so many different ways that different groups can incorporate 
their own unique continuity of operations. But the ultimate goal is that you're able to continue your operations in spite of the emergency. Um, and the emergency becomes a speed bump versus a complete roadblock. So along with being the coordinating agency, the liaison agency, ensuring and holding agencies accountable for their continuity of operations, we also host the Emergency Operations Center. Um, and so in this picture, you see um, several men and women clustered at different computers. This was pre-COVID, um, so they're not wearing masks. And what this allows is, this allows each different agency to sit in the same space and literally stand up and communicate. So if there's a community engagement section, then there will be five to eight different agencies. And instead of us having to call and wait and hope that Sam picks up the phone or that John picks up the phone or that Mariah picks up the phone, we simply just get up, stand up, walk over. Hey, Sam, you know, we're getting this, this concern located in Woodside, Queens. Um, what can we do? How can we do it? What resources are out there? Um, so the Emergency Operations Center is the place that we exchange information. It's the place that we make key decisions to our emergency response. Um, this is a place where our commissioner and executives are very much involved. Um, we each have an emergency support function role and we report out and report next to our partners to let folks know what's going on and what our recommendations are, what decisions need to be made. So the Emergency Operations Center, um, with COVID, when COVID hit, we definitely had to shift and make it virtual for the first time. And so what we utilize within our city is something called Microsoft Teams. And we still are able to do this in that we have an open line and we do some chatting and I'm able to engage with any agency that's involved in the emergency versus having to look up an email or a phone number and hope I'm not bothering them, hope I'm not inconveniencing them. Um, it's an all hands matter and folks are, we call it activated. And so that means that they are on call and when the emergency hits, they're the person that will be responsible and the point of contact within their agency and within their team. Um, some of you may have seen something like the Emergency Operations Center on different TV shows. Um, oh, my mind is going blank. Uh, Law and Order has done some recording in our spaces. Um, they also kind of model a lot of the different visuals within it because we have FDNY, we have NYPD, we have all the different agencies that you could think of and not think of all in the same space. In terms of our response and recovery, what you'll notice from us is we have, whenever there's a, a, a physical emergency, we have what we call CICs, citywide interagency coordinators. Um, and they're, they're anchored within New York City Emergency Management. And what they do is they go to the site of the emergency, they assess, and they report back to emergency management, to our commissioners, our executives, to say like, here's what's going on, here's the agencies that we need to be on site. And, and when those agencies are on site, they also point folks back to our SIMS, that citywide incident management system of reminding folks of their roles, of the change of command, of the responsibilities, and to ensure that folks are playing nice in the sandbox. Um, so with every emergency, that requires um, multiple agencies, you'll always see a picture in the background with someone with a New York City Emergency Management jacket on and you might be like, well, what are they doing? Um, they are responding to the emergency and they're getting on the ground information. They're gathering footage for us to, to really see physically what needs to be done and they're making sure and coordinating on the ground. Within this, we also do recovery. Um, and so in so many ways, with Ida, for example, we are still responding, um, but we know that there's going to be a lot of muck out. We know that there's mold. And so then we have to shift to that recovery. What needs to be done to get folks back into their living places in a healthy way without risking their lives and their safety and their well-being? Um, so we have different plans when it comes to recovery to ensure that we are able to help New Yorkers recover and get back to the best situation of normal after whichever type of emergency occurred. 
And in this picture, you see some folks sitting around a lot of computer screens. Um, you see a TV that's on with the news in the background. Um, and this is our watch command center. Um, within our watch command center, you have folks who send out the messaging. Um, some of you hopefully are registered for Notify NYC. And so you receive messaging whenever there's an emergency. It may say, hey, the Cross Bronx Expressway is currently closed due to a five car pileup. Um, please avoid this this highway at this time. That's coming from us and that's coming from the watch command center. They are connected to the radios of all the New York police departments, all of the fire departments, EMT. Um, they are connected through radio to all of the executives. And when I say executives, I mean the mayors, the commissioners, the deputy commissioners of all the different agencies. They have radio stations or excuse me, radio channels that they're able to coordinate and gather information. So within our watch command, our folks here are gathering information, they're assessing information, they're monitoring social media accounts of city agencies as well to see like, wait a minute, have, have we gotten a lot of concerns regarding the storm hitting the certain web page? What is it saying? Let's see if we can address that. Um, so our coordinating information and the people that we rely on and where you're getting your information more than likely is coming from the watch command center. Now, I wanna shift gears, um, gave you like a deep dive of like what we do as New York City Emergency Management. Um, again, myself and Sam, we work within the Community Engagement Bureau. So we get the opportunity to really work with you, members like you in the public. Um, and so I wanna share the different education and preparedness type of programs that we have. Um, in, some, in so many ways, you can be involved in each and every one of them. So the first one on the far left, you see a yellow logo that says Ready New York. And this is our individual preparedness. So this is a workshop that we do for general population, older adults, um, children, DAPN stands for Disability Access and Functional Leads, Immigrants, Limited Language Proficiency. We're able to do a workshop from anywhere from 25 minutes to an hour, giving you step-by-step -step instructions on how you could prepare you and your household for an emergency. Um, the resources and the tools that we use for this, we have something called the My Emergency Plan that is translated into the primary 13 languages of New York City. And this is something that you can request on the internet or by email, and you can send us a date, a time, here's where we want you to come, um, here's the population, here's what languages we need, and we will show up with our smiles and we will provide the workshop according to what the needs and the requests that you've made as the public. So that's our Ready New York, that's individual preparedness. Our community preparedness program, um, we work with nonprofits, faith-based organizations, as well as community-based networks and faith-based networks. Um, and so we use a tool called the Community Emergency Planning Toolkit, and we provide workshop series throughout the year um, during this month, we'll have a variety of trainings, um, anywhere from how to make a communication strategy for your organization and or network. Um, and so that means like a call down. If you are one of the leaders in your organization, I see, I'm going to use you, Christine, I see your name on the top. So Christine, let's say that you're one of the directors of your organization and in your mind and on your scrap notes, you know all the 15 people that you need to call if ever there's an emergency. But let's say that Christine is impacted by said emergency. No one else knows who those 15 people are to call. And so what we do as a unit is provide you some steps to create a plan so that it doesn't fall on just Christine's shoulders, but all the other leaders and co-leaders within your organization and network know which action steps to take to to respond to that emergency, to do whatever communication call down, or it might be a needs assessment. It might be identifying the resources and, and assets throughout your community. Um, and it may be that you say, hey, we're gonna host a meeting um, and coordinate all of our organizations when an emergency happens so that we could pull together and better respond and help out our community. And so with community preparedness, we do that throughout workshop series. We also do something called a boot camp which is two half day um, sessions where it's a, a quick download, a very quick download of the toolkit, how to utilize it and some steps. 
But those workshop series are where we really dive in deeper and give you actionable steps and how to prepare an emergency plan for your community. And how you define community can be, okay, it's this three block radius right here in the South Bronx, or we're in Crown Heights. We serve the older adults within this section of Crown Heights. That's our community. So we're not here to say, no, cover this community. However you design community, we are encouraging you to create a plan. Now, why are we having you create a plan for your household or for the community organizations or even the faith-based organizations? In so many ways, we're doing this to really allow you to be prepared and not scared. And so when we say that, that's to say New York City government, we do things great and we do things as to our best ability. However, there is never going to be enough of us city employees to help all the millions of people that live in New York City. And so when we have community groups and households that have some preparedness systems or you know plans within their households or organizations, that allows you to be a little bit more resilient. That allows your bounce back to be a little bit quicker to respond. Um, when you get linked up with community preparedness, you get linked up with Sam, myself, and our other teammate, Jill. And we link, we reach out to you and say, hey, Karen, hey, Lenny, hey, Tayana, um, what are you seeing on the ground? What are some concerns? What are some needs? So I can let my other folks know who are responding to this emergency and we can see if we can identify a solution. So in so many ways, we're also establishing a two-way communication um, with you to us um, for us to share out those concerns versus it just be top down and we just share updates with you and hang up the phone. The third program within community engagement is our CERT program. That's Community Emergency Response Team. And this is a volunteer program. The basic training is usually about six to eight weeks, if I'm not mistaken, um, with one to two sessions per week. And it's a, at least a year long commitment. And this is to help New Yorkers before and after emergencies. So our CERT volunteers, once they do their basic training, um, they are ones to respond if there is a power outage. Let's use Staten Island. There was a power outage when Tropical Storm Andre came our way. And we we reached out to the CERT volunteers in that neighborhood and said, hey, could you help with traffic control with NYPD? Um, they've been trained in doing that. They show up to the site and they help with traffic control. Um, they also help with missing persons report whenever NYPD say, hey, we need help. Um, we have a missing child who's located in this area. Do you have any CERT volunteers available? They're trained to do search um, missions as well. They're trained to do customer service at shelters. They're, they're at water stations during summer streets. So they do a variety of things. They also help facilitate these Ready New York presentations um, because what we found is so many of the CERT volunteers are very passionate and eager to really be a part of the community and serve the community and be a resource. Um, so if there's anything that you can take away from today, it's definitely that, hey, we do great work in coordinating plans and coordinating agencies to help New Yorkers before, during, and after emergencies. But I also want you to walk away knowing that there is a role that you can play as it pertains to emergencies. And no, I'm not saying become an emergency manager, although there is a lot of a joy and thrill in that but as leaders in your community it would be phenomenal for you to tap into one of these three programs or all of these three programs and really help your communities with knowing what to do when an emergency happens um, I think if we were to poll New Yorkers Sam and I at least 80 percent of New Yorkers would say that they will stand by and wait for the government to help them when an emergency happens um, and why we don't want that is that we are not able to get to you fast enough. We need plans in place, but we can't create all the plans for every single household. So if you're walking away and like, well, what do I take away from this? One takeaway would definitely be that you can participate and be part of Ready New York. You could bring us to you and you could be your, your house of worship. You could be Girl Scouts. You could be Boy Scouts. You could be the community service club. You can be whichever club, group, or organization, and you bring us in and we start presentations. You can also be a lead organization within the network and say, hey, I want to get this coordinated to a place where we can create a plan for our community because we did it in COVID-19, but we didn't have anything documented. So now's the time. Or you can say, hey, 
I'm not really affiliated with the group or I don't want to bother with group work. I want to be a cert volunteer, get myself trained and work with others once I'm a, a trained volunteer. So there's three different ways that you could be a part. It sounds like the presentation is over, but there is more. So stand by. One thing I want to touch on is I, I said it very briefly and I want to emphasize it again is that we do special Ready New York workshops um, for older adults, for immigrants and folks with limited English proficiency. This means if you say, hey, I want you to come out, but we need someone to speak Haitian Creole. I'm not going to be able to speak Haitian Creole, but absolutely I will be sure that I get an interpreter to come with me to present to your group that speaks Haitian Creole. And so we are very, we mean what we say in terms of we want to make sure that we are able to meet the needs of your communities. Um, we want to make sure that we are able to provide resources and knowledge for folks with disability access and functional needs. Um, so this may be people who are wheelchair bound. This may be people who have limited hearing or limited vision or no hearing or no vision. Um, we need them to be prepared in emergencies and we need you all as leaders as well to remember to consider them and incorporate them within your community plans or your organization's plans. And with children, we have um, we have our ready girl. So in the picture, you see a young, a young boy and a little girl holding a comic book. Um, and there's a superhero and she's called ready girl and ready girl can come and present and do a presentation with children on how they can prepare. So if you work in a school, we can come work with your parents. We can come work with your teachers and we can come work with your students. We can work with your whole population. So you may be wondering, well, why are you doing these workshops this, this month of September? What's the big deal? Um, National Preparedness Month is no, in the month of September every year. And this is also a time for us to, to pause and say, hey, like, what are you doing to prepare for emergencies? In your household, do you have a go bag? Do you know what it means to have a go bag? Where is your emergency meetup spot for your family? You know, in schools, they do the fire drills. They unfortunately do the active um, shooter drills. Um, and depending on what city and what location, there may be like what to do if there is a tornado coming, because now we've been seeing tornadoes in the city. What do we do? And we do different drills. It's important for you to know to also have those type of drills within your household. Don't assume that everyone knows. Just go here. Make it explicit. If there's ever an emergency, call Aunt Mariah. And Aunt Mariah might not even be located in New York City, but if the lines get intertwined and you can't get through to somebody else in the city, Aunt Mariah might be in Philadelphia or North Carolina and she will know, okay, yes, I've heard from all four people from the household and she can message that back to each of the individuals to you all are able to connect. So National Preparedness Month is really a time for us to pause and pour resources and knowledge into your minds and into your visions for you with the hopes of you grabbing hold of it and really consider and start making plans for your households, organizations, houses of worships, and even community net networks. In this picture, you see a couple of different hands stuffing um, what we call our Ready New York bags, the plastic bags. This picture was taken about two years ago. Um, and we are putting our Ready New York guide in there. We're putting a children's book in there. And we're also putting a Know Your Zone book. So I'm going to stop talking. I'm going to grab a sip of water. But I want you to listen to this special video to learn more about what community preparedness can provide for you. New York City faces a range of emergencies, from severe weather to fires to power outages and much more. If your community organization or network isn't prepared, it's hard to respond calmly and effectively. That means you might not be able to continue serving your community when they need you the most. But with a plan in place, your community network has a much better chance of being able to help others. New York City Emergency Management's Community Preparedness Program 
offers local community and faith-based networks and organizations the tools they need to prepare for, respond to, and recover from emergencies. Learn what you need to have in place before an emergency. You can find out how to identify local resources to create a community resource directory and show your community members where to go for specific services or assistance. The program also offers a framework for coordinating volunteers and creating an emergency communication plan to help you stay connected with your community. The program also provides a blueprint for what to do after an emergency. You can learn how to prioritize resources and services and the best ways to manage volunteers and donations. This ensures you don't get overwhelmed by resources you can't use and get enough of what you need. Emergencies happen. But having a plan means your organization can continue to be of service even during the tough times. So sign up with the Community Preparedness Program today and let New York City Emergency Management help you organize your community network as you help others. So I know in so many ways, many of much of what was in the commercial I've, I've mentioned, um, you are kind of a part of us right now because we have your email information, but absolutely we want to stay in touch with you. Um, before we end this session and open it up for questions, there are a couple of things I want to remind you all of that are very important. The first one that I want you all to know is that we are notified, we provide notified NYC. Um, so these are free emergency alerts. You can get this on your phone. It could be a phone call. It could be a text or you can simply download the app Notify NYC. We translate all of our Notify NYC alerts into all of the primary 13 languages. Um, if you say, hey, I don't want Notify NYC, you can also go to our Twitter handle or our Facebook handle and we post information on larger emergencies on our social media. The reason why Notify NYC is important is because it is the city's official method of messaging the public when there is any type of emergency, whether it be a car accident, whether it be a fire in your neighborhood and there's a, a street closed off, whether it be a water main break, whether it be an active shooter and a whole block is cl closed off. But depending on what information you put in when you register, you can get notifications for the whole city or you can get notifications specifically to your zip code. Um, I encourage you each to make sure that you are signed up. And if you're like, I got it, Mariah, move on. I encourage you to help one of your loved ones sign up. And if you say, Mariah, they're set too, then think about your colleagues, your friends, and your coworkers as well. The more folks who are officially receiving the official source of notifications from the city, the better. I say official because I know there's also another app called Citizen App where it allows the public to send different publications and sometimes Notify NYC is intertwined, but Citizen App is not the official source of notifications from the city. So whenever we are giving updates specifically from the mayor or we say, hey, we have some service centers open, we're going to use Notify NYC. In the middle, you see a... a, a a big circle, red, orange, yellow, lime green, green, till, and it says know your zone. At the very beginning of this workshop, I mentioned to you all that we are currently in hurricane season. Um, what it looks and feels like us, for us in New York City, it's getting more and more intense. Before we would say, ah, oh, we just get a couple of tropical storms, nothing major. But ever since Superstorm Sandy, the storms are increasingly more intense and they can impact us and blindside us in different ways. So with Know Your Zone, you will literally go to, you could type in NYC Know Your Zone within your um, Google browser and it will pop up and you will go to where you are located, where you live and also where you work or where you spend the majority of your time and you will take note to what your, your zone is. The zones listed in Know Your Zone is identified and created by our New York City leadership folks. 
and we utilize this when it comes to evacuations. Um, this is not in sync with the FEMA mapping, the flood zones. This is the evacuation zones that are used if the mayor goes to a press conference and he says everyone is in zones one and two within Queens. We need you to evacuate as soon as possible. Then you would want to know, am I in zone one or two? Um, and you will want to go to a place of higher ground in a safer place. Um, and so that may be someone, you know, in Harlem, you might know somebody in central Bronx, um, where it doesn't have a high evacuation zone because it's further away from the water. So check out know your zone. I mentioned to you all the community emergency planning toolkit. That's part of that community preparedness commercial that we just saw. I mentioned to you all the Ready New York, my emergency plan. Um, these are all resources that are on our website as well. And throughout the month, we do have some in-person events. Um, if you're around on Thursday, uh, around Union Square, we have a Protecting One Another, the Pet and Service Animal Preparedness Fair. Um, this is just a reminder for, for individuals who do use service animals and for individuals who have pets that just like you as a human being need to be prepared for emergency, there needs to be a bag ready for, for the pet or for the service animal um, for emergencies as well. For kids preparedness at the Bronx Zoo this coming Saturday, or excuse me, this coming Sunday, Ready Girl and a couple of us will be at Bronx Zoo, will be at a, at a table giving out information and reminding folks of how to prepare for emergencies, reminding folks of, of different resources available, and just reminding folks the importance of being prepared. We plan on being at Staten Island's Children's Museum later on the month. That will be September 26th. Um, that's a family preparedness day. Um, with this, we are like reminding again, get prepared. This is a time. Let's work together. And then we'll have an older adults fest. So this will be in Pelham Parkway in the Bronx. And this will be for older adults. And it will be infused with different activities as well as many workshops for older adults to know what they can do to prepare for emergencies, what their loved ones should know and do, like writing down medication information, having points of contacts documenting like, oh, this person does not speak English so that if a person who's responding to the emergency comes by, they're able to read that note and get the resources needed for the people. In addition to the in-person events, we have additional webinars that I would love for you to join. The first one is actually tomorrow. Today was the, the open house. Tomorrow I'll be hosting the Creating Communication Strategies for Emergencies. Um, this is targeted for community and faith-based organizations and or networks who are looking for ways of how they can strengthen their strategies for communication. Don't think social media is not about like how to publicize your work. This is when emergencies happen, what can you do as an organization, as a network to help communicate within internally as well as externally. Um, we also will have a special workshop, how community organizations and small businesses can work together in emergencies, September 14th. September 21st, how to meet the moment during emergencies. This will be the three steps to organizational preparedness. So think of that continuity plan that we mentioned. That's what this training is. Um, we also have a community mapping workshop. So transferring your community assets into resources. Um, so much of what you all, you will hear me say, Sam say, and my other colleagues are documented. Like it's in your brain and that's great. But if something happens to you, can the next person pick it up and know what to do? And that's what we're trying to do in terms of preparedness. So it's not even just pumping in information into your, your hearts and minds, but it's also making sure that you document it and store it somewhere safe for other folks to access for when, not if, but when that emergency happens. And then our last webinar training of the month will be DAFN training, that's Disability Access and Functional Needs for Community and Faith-Based Organizations. Um, and so this will be, you might be an organization and you might say like, well, we have some plans, but we don't even know where to, to begin to think of how to make sure that we are inclusive and in incorporating the needs of folks with accessibility or language access or even the, the vulnerable populations. Um, so all of these webinars are targeted for community and faith-based groups. We encourage you to come to all or some. Um, if you say, hey, I can't, still register so that you can get the follow-up information as well as the recording. Um, you can go to our website, www.nyc.gov backslash NP, 
that's P as in Paul and M as in Mariah. And you can check out all of our in-person events as well as our webinar events. Um, there's a couple of different resources. The Notify NYC I spoke about, the Community Mercy Planning Toolkit I spoke about as well, the Ready New York. We also have the NYC Severe Weather. Um, so when we do have storms pending, oftentimes that is where we post information. And right now, seeing how we just had the Hurricane Ida, we also have a page. I am not sure if you're able to click on this, but if not, if you can copy and paste it or just read it and type it into your browser, it's nyc.gov backslash Ida. That's I, D is in dog, A is in apple. Um, and, and here we have a lot of resources listed. I want to pause and take a break, a breather, and I want to tap in my colleague and teammate Sam, and he's going to speak on the recent FEMA resources that have been released and available to the public. Sam? Hi, can you hear me, Mariah? Yes, I can. Great, thank you. Um, so just wanted to expand on what Mariah was just saying about that link. So the nyc.gov slash Ida link brings you to our post storm resources page, which has a lot of resources for people who are affected by Ida. So this is definitely something we're encouraging you to spread in your community. One resource you probably heard about yesterday was that um, President Biden signed a major disaster declaration for parts of New York City, which means that um, folks in New York City are eligible for reimbursement. So if you live in the Bronx, Queens, Brooklyn, or Staten Island, and you um, experience damage to your home from Hurricane Ida, you can potentially be reimbursed by the federal government. And so two ways you can find out more is by going to that link, nyc.gov slash Ida. It is the first bullet on this list. We keep this page updated, so we'll keep it updated with anything. And that is a way that you can get in touch with FEMA. The city has also open service centers in all five boroughs. And this is another way that you can, um, in person, get up to date with um, how you can get resources or people in your community can get resources. And in um, uh, Bronx, Brooklyn, um, Queens and Staten Island, FEMA is there to help people with those claims for individual assistance. There's also public assistance. So if you work at a nonprofit in any of the five boroughs, you could also potentially be reimbursed for damages or um, expenses responding to Ida. But I would encourage everyone to look at the page nyc.gov slash Ida to see what resources might be available in your community. Thank you so much for sharing those resources, Sam. Um, we have come to the end of our workshop and I know that we have a nice group and I wanted to give the opportunity to open up the floor. Um, first, I wanna say thank you for joining us. Second, stay in touch with us. Email us at communityprep, that's C-O-M-M-U-N-I-T-Y-P-R-E-P -M -M -E at oem.nyc.gov. Um, so there you can stay in touch with us if you wanna be part of our weekly newsletter, um, where we also send out emergency notifications, emergency press releases. Um, when declarations like Sam just shared came out, we blasted it out through our email list. So email us there to stay in touch. You can also email me at my email, which is in the chat room. Um, and we are here as a resource, a free resource for each and every one of you. Um, and we want to make sure that you each know how to access us. And I want to give you the opportunity to ask questions. Um, so if you have any questions, you can drop them in the chat. Um, you can also use our Q&A box and drop chat in there as well. I'm not seeing any there. I thought I saw a hand, but it went down. Um, so I'll stand by. OK, thank you, Christine. So Christine is asking, when will the next session for CERT training open up. Um, they just had a graduating class, I believe, about three weeks ago. And so the next one should be opening up either sometime this month in September 
or possibly early October. Um, and so what you can do is go to their website and you can, um, we'll get that website in the chat and you can register your information. And when they open up the next cycle, they'll send you the information and you can begin to train. Um, because of COVID, they have been doing hybrid. We are shifting gears to be in person. Um, so they're, they very well likely will be in-person sessions as well. This most recent graduating class had some some practice sessions in person as well as some workshops and trainings online. So it was a hybrid. Um, so thank you, Sam. Sam put the website in. Um, Christine and others check out nyc.gov backslash C-E-R-T. Um, get your name on register in there and they will reach out to you for the next training. Would there be any more questions, curiosities, wonderings? Okay. If, okay, there we go. There we, okay, thank you, Christine. When will the next Community Preparedness Toolkit Bootcamp be? Um, so we scheduled these per request. And so if you are with an organization slash network and you say, hey, can you come in in October? We're gonna coordinate our dates with you and we'll be there. Um, we also are doing a deep dive. And so we can do um, five different workshops that are about an hour long and break it up into a way that has actionable steps. Um, we can also customize the experience for you as well. You may say, hey, we just want to figure out our how we're going to vol manage volunteers and donations. And our other weak spot is that we don't have a resource map. And so we can focus on those two things. So you just let us know what, what your needs are, when and where, and we'll coordinate with you from there. I see some others. I don't know if you all have questions. If you do have questions, definitely reach out. Um, you can reach out to that community prep email or email me as well. And Sam just dropped it in there for you to copy and paste it. Inside the chat, if you're able to access it, I also put the flyers in a couple of languages for the FEMA recovery um, that Sam was speaking of. And so if you are impacted or you have loved ones or folks in your community encourage them to start the process. Um, what you will find are that the, the description gives you a total of four steps. Um, they say, first, take photos of your damaged home and belongings. Second, make a list of the damaged or lost items. Third, if you have insurance, make the claim with your insurance. If you don't have insurance, then absolutely continue forward with FEMA. Um, and you can apply with FEMA on their website, disasterassistance.gov. They have a FEMA app and they also have a phone number. Um, so that information is on the flyer. We're going to, if as we get information, we'll share it with you at some point. Hopefully there'll be a, a more in-depth workshop to go through that process. Um, but what I will say is that this is, this FEMA um, funding is only available to U.S. citizens. Um, Unfortunately, there, there possibly could be additional New York City funds that come available that has more flexibility. But with the FEMA, it is specific. Um, so be be mindful of that as well. So I want to thank each and every one of you again for joining us. Um, we're going to stop there. Again, we have a session tomorrow on communications. If you want to come, come. If you say, well, I'm not the best person, but I'm going to send somebody, send them over tomorrow at 1 o'clock. Um, where you signed up for this webinar, you can go back to that same landing page and you should be able to access some of the other webinars as well. Um, thank you again for all of your time. Stay safe and we will be in touch.